<laughs> Good morning and welcome to Retro Basin. We are coming to you live from the Retro Basin studios in Driftwood, Texas, but uh, just up the road a ways in Springfield, Missouri, at the Bass Pro Shops World Headquarters, a truly special event is going on this very weekend. As some of you may know, uh, this year, 2022, marks the 50th anniversary of Bass Pro Shops. And they are really celebrating in style this year with an event known as the World's Fishing Fair. This year's event promises to be the largest in history with over 500,000 square feet of fishing tackle and equipment and over 150 vendors with specials only available at the show. In addition to that, uh, a lot of the uh, old school greats of bass fishing, including Roland Martin, Jimmy Houston, Bill Dance, and even KVD, he's kind of getting up there a little bit, will be present. And uh, I've seen a number of photos on Instagram of folks who have been able to hook up with those fishing legends. Unfortunately, we're stuck in Texas this weekend and unable to get to that event live. So I thought I would celebrate from afar in a very retro way. Now, while this is the 50th anniversary of Bass Pro Shops, the World's Fishing Fair has only been around since 1988. Uh, that was the first event with over 250,000 live in-person attendees. And really, it was largely considered the single event that put Bass Pro Shops on the map. Uh, a lot has changed since 1988. In some ways, um, maybe some things haven't, but I just so happen to have in my hands here a catalog from that very first year of the World's Fish and Fair. So while we could not be there in person to celebrate <laughs> the 50th anniversary of Bass Pro Shops, I figured we'd take a little walk through this old school catalog to see what's changed and what's still the same. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. So here is the cover of that 1988 World's Fishing Fair catalog, and I gotta be honest with you, that's a pretty glorious cover, isn't it? <laughs> so this is the first year ever of the World's Fishing Fair put on by Bass Pro Shops, and it looks like it was March 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th in 1988. It was labeled as the greatest sale on earth. Uh, fishing School by the Stars, uh, Live 17.5 Pound Bass, Giant Tackle Exposition, uh, over $25,000 of prizes, and here's what I loved about it. Uh, Four-day fare pass, only $5, half of which, I guess, uh, 2 bucks and 50 cents went to conservation. So that is pretty cool. So we will definitely take a walkthrough of this catalog. Uh, see some of the highlights and some of the hottest tackle items for 1988. Uh, I wonder how many of those items are still hot today. So like pretty much every Bass Pro Shops catalog that I've ever seen, it starts out with a lot of the tracker boats. Uh, some of these look a little bit different. So 1988 definitely had a uh, almost sort of a Tron looking boat, didn't it? That's a, that's a totally different look uh, from what you see in the bass boats today. The tracker Titan, very interesting. Single seat, really interesting uh, cockpit there. Uh, almost uh, futuristic in a way. Uh, here he's got some more uh, familiar looking trackers. We've got a 16 footer as well as that V16. I like that one a lot. That's definitely the old Doug Hannon model right there. Here we've got the Tracker 17-footer, very similar to uh, what we're fishing with these days with the old retro wagon. And then this is the TXS-17, another nice-looking aluminum boat. 
By the way, I, I wish I could get those prices today. <laughs> 49 and 5900 bucks for those two, respectively. Not too bad. So a nice V17 and also looks like a Fish and Ski Magna 17. Uh, I got a tracker 1800 FS and 1800 TF. It looks like these are fiberglass bass trackers, something you don't see a ton. I guess this is maybe before they went to the Nitro. Uh, so that looks like probably the, I guess, the predecessor to the Nitro boat, but it's actually a, a bass tracker. Uh, and the old bass and buggy uh, or the sun tracker. That's a honey of a boat for running around the old lakes. And the party barge and the party hut. <laughs> you know, Bass and Buds, I think some point in the future I'm going to have to either get a party barge or a party hut uh, and do it upright. Look at that. That thing looks like a hoot. And you could definitely have a good old time doing some swimming and some crappie fishing from that thing. And for 6000 bucks, oh, man. So some smaller boats here. Looks like we got the old Bantams, canoes. And this is interesting. Look at this, the 14 Tracker Topper. I am not familiar with this uh, boat, but it looks, I mean, it's a bass tracker, but that's gotta be the smallest bass tracker that I've ever seen. And I guess if it's a topper, that means it's supposed to go in the bed of a uh, pick em up truck. So this is, I guess, before they had the Mako, the a Tracker also had some saltwater boats. Now this is really wild. 18 20 23 and look at this a 23 cuddy cabin tracker <laughs> that has got to be the wildest saltwater boat i think i've ever seen uh, man <laughs> and uh imagine getting a 23 cuddy for uh 20 g's these days holy mackerel all right so here we go uh looks like we got uh, our bass and bud lojo doing a little fishing uh <laughs> I don't know how you would ever stand up in that float. That's wild. Look at that. Uh, that guy probably took a spill right after that photo was taken. Uh, and we've got some uh, other tubes. The old flying banana. A favorite. <laughs> oh, who remembers these pool floats? It's actually like a, a lawn chair with a styrofoam cooler broken up, turned into armrests. Uh, ah, you don't see too many of those anymore, <laughs> but that was, uh, I think we had a few of these back in the day. And some nice water skis, uh, before everybody figured out you could actually go wakeboarding behind a boat. A lot of water sports here, that's pretty interesting. Alright, so here's one of my favorite sections, the life jackets. I got to tell you, there ain't nothing better than an old school Bass Pro Shops life jacket. I don't know why, um, but I just love the look of these old ones. That looks like a Bass Tracker one of some sort. And there's just a standard Bass Pro logo. Speaking of uh, kicking ass and wearing rayon jackets, um, this guy probably does both. All right, some more tracker apparel, pretty sweet. And here we go, we're getting into the greatest sale on earth, uh, Bass Pro's hottest items for spring at their lowest prices ever. So first off, some combos. Ooh, look at that. Uh, the Procaster Mag Force, one of my favorite baitcasting reels of all time, one that I still throw a ton today. $34.97. Yeah, that, uh, if I ever saw that on the eBay for $34.97, I'd probably be picking it up. <laughs> nice man stretch 20 oh boy so yeah i really need to do a walkthrough of our rod and reel collection because i'm looking at this page and i see a ton of these that we still throw today uh the old school ambassador 500 4500s 4600s for sure uh these shimanos man there are some nice bantams in there some that I actually don't throw, like the Speedmaster or the Black Magnum, but both good-looking reels. And now we're getting into a section of some nice Daiwa reels. Uh, which of these have I thrown before? Uh, you know, well, I always wanted to get a Procaster back in the day, and I never was able to pick up that reel as a kiddo. 
Uh, but this right here, the old pen speed shifter, that was actually my first bait casting reel ever. And uh, Terry over at Bass Fishing Archives did a great article on that. I'll drop the link down below. But in his opinion, and probably in mine too, it was one of the worst uh, bait casting reels ever designed. Uh, it was like one of Penn's few forays into a classic freshwater bait caster. And uh, let me tell you, it was a tough one to learn on. Uh, I, I definitely cut my teeth pulling some backlashes out of that thing. Ryobi uh, reels before they made drills, and of course, a lose uh, BB1N. Oof, I bet that exact reel would still sing today. All right, we've got some nice Shimano Fighting Star spinning reels, some Abus, some Daiwas. Uh, man, I, I love spinning reels in this era, and honestly, my collection does not actually have enough of these. I need to kind of beef up my old school spin and reel selection just a little bit and there ain't nothing better uh than four-year-old lures coming off a of zebco 33 and they definitely have a bunch of zebcos here including the old 33 classic uh the old rhino tough zebco look at that thing that thing is a tank uh looks like 23 89 and 1994 Uh, here we have, uh, I've got a feeling a pretty glorious section of pistol grip rods. Vast majority of the rods back in the days, you can see, still a feature, even in 1988, that short pistol grip handle. I think we're starting to get into some longer handles here, but even most of those came with what they call that power hump. So just definitely not uh, at all similar to the real handles that you see today um, in, in a number of different ways. And here we've got another variety of some different line of Bass Pro rods. You know, it's kind of funny, but over the years, my reels have generally been a bunch of different companies. My rods have pretty much always been Bass Pro rods. Uh, for me, I've never had a problem with them. I'm pretty tough on my tackle. And if I snap a Bass Pro rod, which I've done before, I definitely don't feel as bad as if I snap a more high-end uh, fishing rod. There we got some nice uh, crappie gear and some rod and reel combos. I bet you could throw a slider worm on some of those guys, huh? And what are these, the hottest combos ever? Yeah, there are some just glorious combos, almost too many to go through here. Um, but a nice Abu Garcia Bass Pro combo for $69.87, uh, that is a honey of a deal. Uh, what else do we have here? Ooh, Daiwa Procaster Magforce HT1000, a combo with a Bass Pro Rod, $49.94. I feel like that's like just like 10 bucks more than the actual reel itself. That is wild. We've got some by Ryobi, Mitchell, uh, and also another Daiwa down there. But man, imagine being able to get a rod and reel combo for 50 bucks and having it actually be top of the line. That's pretty cool. Uh, we've got some old school fishing line section. I think I spot uh, Captain Frank Mundus over there with a giant uh, great white shark. And uh, here we go. There's Roland Martin. He's probably uh, shaking hands and saying son up in Springfield today. So sorry we're missing him. But man, <laughs> that's pretty cool to see him there. Plan now to attend. Well, I would if I could, good buddies. Uh, some nice tracker worm gear here. And I think we're probably going to get into the, yup, tackle box section. Oh, man, here's another one. Uh, you know, there ain't nothing better than an old school Plano. Some of my favorites by far are on this page. I always love this 1152 Magnum. Uh, I've actually got one of these, and I think I've actually got this 1162 um, put up with some more specialty crankbaits. Uh, of course, we've got the old Plasek 4500 uh, UPB. Looks like an Umco of some sort with the uh, cooler on the bottom. And yeah, here we go. The classic Plano 787 and 757. Just some iconic, iconic tackle boxes. All right, now we're getting into my favorite section, the bass lure section. 
And as was standard for, I feel like, over a decade, there was always a one-plus page spread dedicated to the Shoestring Dubois Tornado Spinnerbait. Um, some of you might have seen my request to have uh, Johnny Morris bring back the tornado. You know, I never did hear from Johnny, so he, he must have uh, lost my email address. But I got to tell you, if there's ever a bait they should bring back, it would be this one. Uh, interestingly enough, there's another bait called the Slow Roller, which is a discontinued spinner bait from Bass Pro Shops, and they did bring that back. So that's one. Um, so you never know. Maybe uh, one day they could bring back the tornado. And this is an interesting lure from Lunker Lure called the Springbill. I've seen this. I've never actually fished it. So this is an interesting bait. It's got a standard spinnerbait hook and skirt, but the head almost looks like a sort of an affixed chatterbait. And off it, of course, is a single arm with a spinnerbait blade. So that's a very unique lure. Uh, if I ever got a hold of one of these, I would definitely throw that around some little apartment ponds to see if I could get a fish or two. Oh, there's that slow roller that I talked about. So this is interesting, and you can see by this illustration, the blades actually swing freely on the arm. So when you drop the bait, uh, they actually point upward and let the bait sort of helicopter down. That is pretty wild. I haven't picked up one of the new ones because they're like 10 bucks. Um, but if I ever saw them for $2.19, I'd probably grab uh, three or more. Got some more spinner baits over here from Strike King. What is this? The Bumblebee. Yeah, that you can tell by that blade. That's an old Bumblebee. And the Meps Bass Killer. Uh, one of their few forays into bass fishing, like just, you know, historic classic bass fishing lures, was this, the Bass Killer. Uh, it was actually a great spinnerbait. I liked it a lot. It had living rubber skirts. Um, but for whatever reason, it just did not seem to uh, last as long as some other spinnerbaits out there. And here we are, a little small page dedicated to some buzz bait or buzzing type baits. Uh, the discontinued Bucks Buzzer. That's a neat one. It's an inline uh, buzz bait, both with a uh, silicone skirt, but also this one, which I always loved, was the Bucktail. Um, here's a Norman Weedwalker, still available today, and definitely one that is on the docket to do a retro bass and episode on, as well as this one from Rebel, still available, the Rebel Buzzin' Frog. It's a topwater bait, but it's got a buzzer on it. Almost reminds me of a, a frog version of a Whopper Plopper, and probably a bait that was definitely ahead of its time. So we got some spoons here, jigging and weedless. Some nice Uncle Buck's living rubber jigs, pork rind, just basically, you know, it's kind of funny, you look at a bass tournament these days, and I feel like 9 out of 10 fish are caught on either a soft plastic bait or a jig, and back in the day they just had two pages dedicated to all the jigs you could ever want, that was it. Yet they had a one page dedicated to the color selector, another theme that, you know, I've kind of seen with these Bass Pro catalogs in the 1980s and 90s era is it was always a one-page spread for Dr. Lauren Hill's color selector. Uh, looks like the lures, they've got a couple different ones. The Rebel Rednecks, got a bunch of those. The old uh, Cotton Cordell, it says Stay in Shad. That looks like a CC Shad, but maybe it's a suspending model. Uh, Bill Lewis System 10 Rattle Traps, and of course some Sidewinder Worms. Got some crappie baits over here. Uh, nice two-page spread of some tubes, both the panfish tubes and also the largemouth and smallmouth tender tubes. So we're kind of in the middle of the catalog. You can always tell because there's always this <laughs> order form if you wanted to fill in your order and fax it <laughs> or mail it in, I guess. Very nice. All right, continue with some hard baits here. So this is interesting. So uh, just the classic selection of baits from Hedden, uh, Rebel, more Hedden right there. Uh, anything very interesting. Let's see here. So we got some Bagley's. Uh, this uh, Spinner Shad's pretty nice. That's a, a top water you don't see too often these days. As well as this Poppin B2. Never thrown one of those before. And a nice pop R kit uh, with exclusive colors for Bass Pro Shops. Ooh, look at those. Uh, quarter ounce, two and a half inch. That's a, that's a good looking kit right there. 
We've got uh, Bill Dance, who again is also up in Springfield, Missouri this weekend with some of his Dance's Eel and Dance's Crawl. Some nice G-Finish baits uh, from Hedden, Cotton, Cordell, and Rebel. One of my favorite color schemes of all time is that G-Finish. So here are a couple interesting baits that I, I just can't seem to get a hold of. The Droppin' Zara Spook and the Droppin' Pop R. Uh, both of these actually have a weight right above the treble hook and a through line so that when you stop the bait and put some slack in it, this will sink down, I guess, enticing the fish to, to bite that feathered hook. Pretty well. Uh, some nice crankbaits from uh, Rapala Rebel, as well as what do we have? Some mans over here. Bagley bees and some nice fat cats. Man, just a just a couple pages of nice old school crank and gold there. Uh, here we've got some Sportsman Series kits, and I always love the old Bass Pro kits. Uh, just the selection of lures they had, and also it always came in this uh, Bass Pro Shops uh, container that had the logo on it and sort of almost an amber tint to it. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's funny, but Bass Pro is celebrating 50 years this year. Looks like MEPS did 50 years back in 1988 uh, with a couple of their fishing kits. Yeah, I need to do more MEP stuff these days as well. I, I feel like I say that a lot. Some nice old school worms. What do we see here? Well, so here's the old Ditto Gator Tail, a tournament favorite um, that is still very popular today, if you can find it. We've got the classic culprit worm. Ooh, the man's manipulator. The gill raker. Yeah, that's uh, some nice ribbon tails on that page for sure. Uh, an entire page dedicated to fish scent, <laughs> everything from fish formula to the Bass Pro Hog Scents, Dr. Juice, they still make that, and the man's FS454. Uh, I never actually used this, but I know they had a lot of ads back in the day for that one. All right, so here we are into some terminal tackle. I see the Bass Professor hanging out, sharpening some hooks. It's funny, a lot of this stuff I feel like hasn't changed over the years. Uh, the brush gripper, the old uh, lure retriever, yeah, <laughs> still available today. Rod holders, galore, nets. Ooh, here's some old school glasses. Uh, I think I need to get me a pair of these Roland Martins. I know it'd be off brand for me, but... Uh, those are pretty sharp looking, aren't they? <laughs> the Pro View fishing glasses. And for $7.77, man, <laughs> not too bad. All right, plenty of knives for cleaning largemouth bass. So we're getting into some of the more standard stuff they still have today all the different cookware, camping, camp showers, and tents, and toilets, and and all that good stuff. All right, so back into some apparel here. Uh, anything interesting? <laughs> Doesn't that look like the guy from Carl's uh, Bait and Tackle? <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I wonder if that's where he got it, the ultimate fishing vest. That looks like uh, Carl. Maybe it's probably Carl's dad at this point. And there he is. Uh, I don't know what's more glorious, his one-piece jumpsuit or that mustache and beard. And she's not so sure either. And yeah, I know you spotted this, Bass and Buds. There's the retro Bass and Special, the embroidered satin coach's jacket. And uh, I don't have one with the old buck on it, or the duck for that matter, but yeah, there's the old largemouth bass, and that's a, <laughs> that's a honey of a rayon jacket. Oh, cheese! look at that. So <laughs> one of the things they used to do a little bit more often than they do now is put models in these uh, catalogs instead of actual fishermen. And, you know, here's two guys clearly talking about the fish he missed. I get it. Uh, that is just awful. <laughs> All right, so we got some more Bass Pro Shops apparel. 
Some nice uh, floral California camo hats. Ooh, I got to tell you, if I could ever find this t-shirt section, I would have something. Um, this is just <laughs> so many glorious things on this page. Well, here's a guy with a kiss my bass bikini. Oh, cause cause it says it on the on the back of the bikini. <sighs> Awful. All right, so we've got some uh, some more belly boats. I'm surprised this wasn't up in the um, bass boat section. But something I don't see uh, folks use a whole lot these days is the old belly boat. Kind of seemed like that kind of came and went out of favor. And I don't know about you, but if my hands are water level and I'm trying to throw a bait caster, I think I'd be able to cast like 10 feet. So maybe that's why that didn't work out. Some nice waders. This guy looks like he is an extra on Save by the Bell. So that's cool. Oh, there's old Jimmy with the old motor guide. And there's Roland Hank and looks like Babe Winkleman talking about the quietness of the old Minn Kota power drive. More trolling motors here. Looks like we are getting toward the end of the line of this catalog. Uh, here we are, the state-of-the-art electronics, and I swear, I feel like it were like two companies back in the day. It was either, everything was either Eagle, or it was Humminbird. And here's a nice kit for Humminbird. I kind of like this. Uh, for $99.88, you get a, a Super 60, some floats, and a Humminbird hat? Yeah, I think I'll take it. If you're anywhere near Springfield, Missouri this weekend, I would definitely get your keister on over to Bass Pro Shops to check out the World's Fishing Fair. I'll see you all next weekend, but until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassing.